So this particular vehicle that they had recovered from the 1950s, wh- what was the source of it? Where did they find it? Uh, those details, uh, I did not get cleared. So, okay. Yeah. So they have in possession this thing. They gain access to this thing. And what do they report once they've gained access to it? Oh, those details, I, I do not know. That's a that's probably a question for Dr. Lekatsky. Um, I presume he knows those details. I don't know. So this thing is housed somewhere? It is, yes. Currently? It may still be in the same location that I know about, yes. And how many people have access to this, and how did they prevent this information from being released? I mean, I'll... You know, it goes back to the compartmentation and kind of the ecosystem of secrecy in this community, right? You know, only a limited amount of people, you know, at least at the time, you know, on Lockheed Martin's side. And and Lockheed Martin was complaining basically like, look, like the secrecy is ridiculous. We can't even bring the right engineers. Like imagine you're like a hot engineer, uh, hot engineer, no, hot shot engineer. You might be hot too. I don't know. But <laughs> that, you know, you're fresh out of grad school. Maybe you're like the best PhD electrical engineer. You want to do cool shit. You want to publish an IEEE. You want to like, you know, climb the ladder corporately, you know, and that kind of thing. A Lockheed Martin executive comes to you. Yeah, dude. Uh, you're going to, I can read you into something really crazy, but you're never going to publish papers on it. You're never going to be able to tell people what you worked on. And it's probably not the most career enhancing. But if you want to work on something cool, but I can't tell you because it's unacknowledged until you sign this piece of paper, non disclosure agreement, um, uh, uh, you know, sorry, but here's the raw deal. And, you know, a lot of people are like, fuck you, no. And and it's not like Lockheed Martin could broadcast this to universities like come work for us. Right. You'll work on crazy shit. And, and but that is very akin to a lot of other black programs in the government that are out acknowledged in nature. You don't know what you're signing up for until you get bred in. And I've you know, I've been briefed to a lot of that kind of conventional stuff in my career. So what, that's one of the, the, the problems that. Bob Lazar, and I'd love to get your take on Bob Lazar. One of, one of the things that he talked about was that science can't really operate in a vacuum. Yeah. When you separate the metallurgists from the propulsions experts, from the biological experts, like, and they're not allowed to communicate with each other, and they're not allowed to bring in other experts to have different... Well, that was the frustration that um, I had some friends that I've known my entire career, like almost 14 years, right? I literally know them personally. Um, I had a relationship with them, but they ended up, you know, spilling the beans where, you know, look, we're, we're on the program. I'm an engineer for X, Y, and Z. We can't even cross talk across like the cubicles for God's sakes. Like I can't, I'm looking at material X doing some, um, X-ray diffraction testing on it, which is like shooting a stream of electrons and seeing that how, how it bends and, and looking at the atomic arrangements. I can't even like crosstalk that with another aspect of the program. This is like ridiculous. And and that's kind of the, their frustration. Um, yeah, I knew you were probably going to ask me about Bob Lazar. I know. I, I, figure, I figured as much. Um, Why did they yeah. do that, though? If everybody yeah. was already sworn to secrecy, everybody already has NDAs, it seems the most effective way of reverse engineering or at mm. least gaining an understanding of how these things are structured. Well, that's exactly how Manhattan was, right? People working on the fuses for the bomb didn't necessarily know it was going to a nuclear weapon. And so, and I've seen this kind of compartmentation is up to secrecy in other programs and it is debilitating for progress. And honestly, as a fiduciary, former fiduciary of the taxpayer dollars, it's not the best modus operandus to do it that way. And very few people kind of had that top down, could look across the silos and see what was going on. It just became very dysfunctional and they were afraid of people being too cross-briefed into the different silos for counter-espionage, counter-intelligence. Right. Uh, that, you know, they were re- going to remember a bulk of this program is d- done during the Cold War. And, you know, we were afraid of Russian spies, Soviet moles. And so we made it ultra locked down, but to the detriment of national security. And that was one of the crazy things that got me that I wanted to whistleblow on because I'm like, this is so stupid. Like, right. We should be making more progress on this. Were there any yeah. breaches that you're aware of where foreign agents were able to gain access to materials or an understanding of 
what we know? So I'll tell you about some intel documents I read that kind of obliquely answers that question. So uh, there was sensitive human derived foreign intelligence that I read. Um, so I had access to kind of the ATIP OSAP uh, classified archives, and I was like thumbing through everything. And there's some other people were bringing me documents to evaluate. And I'll never forget, I had, um, I want to say, stolen by the U.S. Uh, intelligence ass assessment from a certain foreign adversary discussing the U.S. reverse engineering program. And I was like, and that was actually another like, what the fuck? And, and so I had an adversary also confirm this program literally because of exfiltrated intelligence. And so they certainly had a limited knowledge, at least fact of, that the U.S. had a program like this, a particular adversary. And actually, I was like, well, I want more. Like, it, I know who wrote this, literally, or who got it, right, uh, on behalf of the United States government. So I went to that certain agency through the uh, approved and official way. And this is kind of part of the myriad reprisals against me. Uh, the agency was like, oh, yes, we have what you're looking for, Dave. Um you're going to need to sign a one-time read-in to something, you know, come visit us to, you know, go to the vault and read it, right? You know, hard copy. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, we have what you're looking for. And ultimately, uh, from what I was told by friends in higher places, my request kind of went up the flagpole at that agency. And all of a sudden, the agency ghosted my boss and I for like two months. And then when I really pressed them hard to gain access, because I'm like, I have a need to know. I need to evaluate this intelligence for fucking Congress. And they debriefed me uh, from all my accesses over in that other sister agency and made up some bogus excuse, like I shouldn't have been briefed to anything in the first place, literally. And basically gave me an administrative mid middle finger, like persona non grata, don't ever fucking ask us about that shit again. And, I, and I, I, I'm sure the person who made the oops that told me they had what I was looking for probably got admonished and slapped on the wrist because I never heard from that person again, even though it was somebody I actually used to work on occasion with. So uh, that was also another way I knew um, I was, uh, uh, you know, there was a lot of smoke and fire because I, you know, had stuff like that happen to me. So this... But knowing that our adversaries were aware of this reverse engineering program, are we aware 